first aid tips for, you want to share with anybody? First aid tips, stay on neutral topics. I know Patty Stanger talks about this all the time, but it, it's true. And I get drawn sometimes, because I'm quick to share and I write humor. Uh, I get drawn into some conversations that we probably shouldn't go toward on a first date, things like politics, religion, you know. Um, but I, I think it's perfectly fine to, to mention that you have children or that you have a specific belief or something, some activity that's important to you. Um, or, you know, if you smoke or you can't stand someone who smokes, things like that, yeah, you can bring that up. But just stay off of religion and politics and please don't mention your ex. Nobody wants to hear about your ex. Nobody, not your ex-boyfriend, your ex-husband. Um, nobody also wants to hear about family problems you have or um, credit problems like the one young lady had, um, work issues. You know, it's better to, because what happens when you start talking about problems that you have, it starts to sound like you're whining and Nobody likes a whiny baby. Right, guys like to solve problems, but we don't want to be inundated with your problems on the first date. So, yeah, it's best to stay positive and say, you know, oh, I just started playing volleyball and I love it, and you know, I want to get in playing some, some more like beach volleyball and get into a league. Yeah, that's good stuff. But if you come off with, yeah, I tried playing volleyball last week and I turned my ankle, and it seems like every sport I try, I get hurt. Oh, it's a downer, you know? So stay mm. positive and talk about things you love. Yeah. And ask a lot of questions. That's the other problem that happens a lot with uh, with first dates. People feel like they're in an interview and they have to sell themselves. Oh, that must suck. But but I think that happens more often than not. So I, I think you can help by asking questions about the other person and giving short answers and you know redirecting too. So do not try and be something that you're not. No. You're just setting yourself up for failure on the second, the third, the fourth date. Right, right. If oh, somebody doesn't right. like you the way you are, move on. There's plenty more fish in the sea. Mm -hmm. Find somebody that likes you for who you are. Don't find somebody that wants to change you. Just find somebody who likes what who you are. And life's so much more fun. And my advice to people when it comes to dating is see it as an opportunity to meet somebody. Right. You know, when we get rid of these expectations of everything having to be right, we can have much more fun. If we were to remove the word dating and say, hey, guess what? Instead of I'm going on a date, I'm going, if you just said, say to yourself, I'm going to meet another new person, mm -hmm. and you're not obsessed about the outcome, as soon as you drop the obsession about the outcome, it becomes, way, I think it becomes way more fun. Sure, the whole relationship in fact too. I mean, we've got such pressure you know, just from society that any relationship you get into, if it if it ends, it's a failure. And I think we just have to get over that. I think you should enjoy the time you spend together, whether it lasts one date, one year, 10 years, your entire lifetime. You just shouldn't, mm -hmm. you know, you shouldn't judge your relationship and your success or not based on how long it lasts. It should be based on what you can do for each other, what how have you have improved your life and how you've improved someone else's life, whether it's taken one date or 20 dates or 2,000 mm -hmm. dates. It's tough when you go on a first date. I always recommend to people, especially if you, if you haven't met or you've just met online, you really should do something quick and simple, um, like go have coffee somewhere, find a coffee shop, find a corner somewhere and just meet there. Don't go through the investment of time and money for guys typically of making a full you know, night out of something that may not be worth it. You know? See, here's the dilemma I get though. I've had this conversation with, with friends of mine before where mm -hmm. they said exactly what you were saying and the conversation goes something like this. When I meet the person that's special for me, I want her to remember the first date I go on. So I don't want to be cheap on the first date. Right. So for me, I, I, I will always invest more on that first date and then if it goes wrong i think i chalk that down to to uh not doing my homework very well on the individual you're saying that spend may... less right on I... the day and have less expectation i guess it's a matter of what we're calling first date so I, I think when you've just met someone online or even if a friend's fixing you up with someone if you're gonna sit through a three-hour dinner with that person that's that's an investment mm. And I mean in time mostly. Yeah. yeah. So I think the first meeting should be a quick meeting somewhere that could d turn into a dinner. It could turn into more. So if I go meet Susan out at uh, Starbucks and we 
order a cup of coffee and sit down and talk and we we're like hey you know this, I is, really, this is really yeah. good let's let's go grab dessert somewhere great it can it could turn into that but if you know if you see it like there's no connection you can end it there and you haven't invested all your time and you're, you haven't wasted the other person's time either mm -hmm. so yeah i always recommend to people especially if you're if you're um first meeting online or through a friend because friends aren't always right <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my friends are terrible at it. But yeah, um, wingmen aren't always the best. So just do something quick and, and easy. Go take a walk. You know, do, do something. Just to meet. And then let the first date happen after that. Call that date zero. Date one is the next date. Yeah, so we have the introduction. Right. And then we have the date. Right. A nice gentle way of getting to know somebody. And yeah. seeing if it unfolds right. naturally. What should women pay attention to when they're on a date? Um, well, I'll tell you what men should not pay, pay attention to is other women on a date. That happens a lot. I, I, in fact, I just saw it last night where a couple is obviously on a first date and home, all homeboy could do is sit back and check other women out as they're walking by. I mean, that is just the biggest turn off, I would think, to most women. Smart, most smart guys will have what many guys would call the two second rule, which means if you're out with a woman, you're allowed to, to, to look at another woman 1,000, 2,000. If, if you're looking at, staring at some other human being when you're on a date, it does look creepy, doesn't it? Yeah, it just it looks, don't do it. It's just It's just uncool. Yeah, it's uncool. And most, I, I rarely run into women that do that, but because women at least are smart enough to hide it. You know, they'll, they'll, you know, pull out something or look at the menu, look past the menu. You know, they're smart enough to make it, mm. you know, so it's not so obvious, but guys are just blatant. They'll just like, gawk and they'll look right at a girl's breasts or butt and it's I mean women know when you're checking them out and the woman you're with knows when you're checking other women out and guys so, other thing is you've got to switch your cell phone off if you're on a date you shouldn't even have your switch cell phone. the phone yeah, off. Don't, don't put it well if you have kids totally different so I understand if you have children you want to make sure that you know nothing happens so yes if you have children leave your phone out and if some call comes through you got to get it no problem but it, you know, if, if your kids are grown and you don't have kids, the phone should be in your pocket or somewhere away. You need mm. to check your phone, go to the bathroom. I, I check my phone at the urinal all the time. It's no problem. Yeah, yeah. good tip. So what about, what have women got so to pay women. attention to? Yeah. Hmm. Um, I think with women, I look at body language a lot when I'm with a woman, especially when I first meet her. I can put a gauge on whether she's interested in me or not just based on how she is acting and what her body language is like. Um, for example, if you know, if I'm the woman and I'm talking to you, how my legs are and how how my body is will tell me a lot about it. So, for example, if she's you know got her legs crossed this way towards me, with her outer leg over the inner, I know that she's interested mm -hmm. in me quite a bit. If she's got her ankles crossed towards me, she's interested in me a little bit. If her ankles are away, not interested a little mm -hmm. bit. If she's sitting this way, the date's over, you know. So, or I'm making her feel uncomfortable and I'm making her, you know, feel like I'm, and this can happen when guys are staring at her boobs or something, she's feeling uncomfortable so she'll cover up. So, and it, it's something that women don't do consciously, but it's very accurate. You can tell a lot by, you know, how your relationship's going based on that. Um, what else? Well, I, I like when women talk, you know, to me in the eye and they, you know, they look me face to face. Um, I like when they smile a lot. Um, it's sexy, I think, when women play with their hair. I think most guys would agree with that. Yeah. I do, I think most guys would agree with that. Yeah, or if they, even if they like, touch themselves, or just little little things they can do are just, like, very sexy. Mm. Sideways glances works for most guys as well, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. the sideways glance is, it, it kills most guys. Yeah. It really does. Yeah, so those things all work. Um, you don't want to be applying makeup at the, at the table. Um. Applying makeup's just, it, it, it just says, it gives you a message to the guy that you're just not important, you know? Well, or if she's applying lip gloss, that's telling me something else, you know? That's true. So I, 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 I would just avoid that. You just keep your purse on the side and, you know. And then just her um, mannerisms, too, just around drinking, like I said, the one girl that I went on those dates with, she was just pounding the wine. That's probably not a good thing to be doing first date, you know? Don't pan the wine. But, um, you know, also if if the two of you are having drinks, you should have a drink. If you're, you know, if I'm on a date and she doesn't want to have a drink, fine, I'm not gonna have a drink either, you know. Yeah, I think you should kind of keep that even. And again, if I'm drinking a beer and she wants to do, you know, shots of Jack, it's probably a disconnect there, you know. So I think you should try to, you know, stay on an even level there with how much you're drinking and what you're drinking. So let's talk about 
Who pays for dates? I'm, uh, I'm old school. Guys pay yeah. for dates. It's yeah. Crazy. I mean, it sucks to some extent, but that's just the way yeah. it is. You know, I'm sorry. Nature has dealt us the certain, you know, the certain situation we're in, and that's just the way it is. Yeah. Um, I agree completely. Yeah, guys, guys, guys gonna, pay for the date. Guys are gonna pay. What's really, really cool is when a girl offers. Um, I normally won't allow her to pay, but when she offers, that's really cool. Um, I think it's it's perfectly fine and acceptable, and I, I also think it's cool when she says, "Look, let me leave the tip." So if, if she if she wants to contribute, okay, um, don't expect it, and don't be disappointed if it doesn't happen. Is what I would tell guys. I've seen guys um, I actually had girls tell me about this too, where the the check comes and the guy will stare at it. You know, he won't even pick it up or. You know, he'll put his card down and say, "Do you want to split this?" And that, to me, that's you know, that's just you're giving the wrong no, message. No, 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 no. Um, but it it's kind of cool too. I mean, I've had girls that I've you know, I've paid for two or three dates, and then you know, we go and we stop for breakfast. It's just like, you know, let me get breakfast. Well, that's awesome too. You know, once in a while, because we're starting to you know, the, even out the the earnings. Hopefully, uh, women are starting to get paid more of what they deserve. So you know, women make money too. But again, it's just tradition. We're gonna pay. Guys gonna pay. And if the guy, you know, and, and dude, if you can't afford it, if you're having a tough economic time, tell her that. Tell her that, hey, you know, let's... Take her on a date that doesn't cost money. Yeah, or... or take her to Starbucks, take her to somewhere. You can have a dinner yeah. that doesn't involve a $300 bottle exactly. of wine. There's, there are always ways that, you know, you can spend time together without having, you know, to really hurt yourself financially. And you don't need to impress a woman the other way either. I've had, I've seen that happen with friends of mine where they'll, they'll be on a date and they'll be like, yeah, you know, I got this $200 bottle of wine. I'm like, you didn't make your mortgage payment this month. Dude. You need to have a $200 bottle of wine? Well, I want to impress her. Well, that's, is that what you want her to be impressed by? Your money. So, I mean, if you're leading with that, that's what she's going to expect in the future. So don't, you know, think about it a little bit. Don't, don't just like put yourself out there in that way. Mm. Good, good answers. Yeah, guys pay. We pay. It's just it. We're paying.